Hello, Monica. I hope this email finds you well. If I may, I have a question for Sayori. To Sayori. Hello, how are you in the digital world? Now I have a 100% super serious question and I hope that you are able to answer it. So, when did you become so darn cute? Were you always like this? Or did you become super cute when you reached high school? Okay, bye! Sincerely, a secret admirer. P.S. Protect the bun. Hi, secret admirer. Yes, the email found me just fine. Sayori, they wanted to talk to you. Hmm. Oh, that cute. <laughs> She's always been cute, secret admirer. She was born cute. I wish I could show you what she was like as a child. She's always been extremely adorable. That's just the way she is. And she's always had that exact same bright, sunny personality the whole time. And apparently the really bad depression too. But the strength to cope with it along with it. And that total love and friendliness towards everyone. So she was born with it is what I'd say. Thanks, MC. I love you so much. I love you too. And on that lovely note, that will be the last email for today. And that also brings club to a close for today. For poem topics next week, I have an interesting idea. We're going to focus on form rather than the topic. So for next week, everyone write an Elizabethan style sonnet, which would be a 14-line poem in iambic pentameter, and a particular rhyme scheme which I'll send out. But for now, that's it. I know Yuri and Sayori can definitely walk home from here, but they'll probably never ride, Natsuki. Hang on a sec, Monica. Would you guys be interested in having a little holiday season celebration here tonight? We're going to be having one anyway, and you guys would be more than welcome. You know I'm in. I'd be in for that, too. Mm. Oh, we'll be in, too. But first, there's something we need to take care of at the school. Don't worry about giving us a ride. We'll just walk there and back. You guys just go ahead and start the party without us. It shouldn't take too long. What are you guys doing? Nothing you need to worry about. You're... Yuri, is it really nothing you need to worry about? Yes, it's nothing you need to worry about. Well, all right then. Just don't get back too late and I'll purpose all the fun. Don't worry, we won't. Come on, Yuri, let's get going. Wonder what they're getting up to. Probably best not to ask. Or use one's partial omniscience to figure out. All is quiet in the student council room. But then, some muffled voices are audible out in the hallway. Check this out! I got you some lockpicks for this! We shouldn't have those. It'll look suspicious if we get caught here. Yeah, but like, we need to get through the door! And it's locked, you can't- or you can tell from the- No need. Watch this. What? Well, how did you- That's my secret. Well, don't expect me to be impressed or anything. I won't, Sundare. You- Shh! We're supposed to be sneaky right now. My wrath is only delayed. Get the door behind you. Done. So now what? All our filing cabinets and shit are locked. Or are they? Yuri casually slides open a filing cabinet, discreetly stashing a piece of paper in her jacket pocket as she does so. How do you do these things? Never mind that. You should get going and look for whatever it is you think is going to help us. On it! Fifteen minutes later. Man, there's nothing that can help us here! The student council people are so boring! Well, I can't say I'm too surprised. I'm not really sure what it is you expected to find here in the first place. I don't know, it's just something! Something that could help us get back to the way things were! Well, at least all the I all know of your failure. Our failure? You're, you're totally an accomplice! I suppose I am. But in any event... We should get out of here before... What was that? Someone's moving around out there! It sounds like they're coming this way! We'll have to hide. There's just enough room in that really tall cabinet. If we get in there, we should be able to... No! I am not doing that trope! What trope? The trope where there's, like, an enclosed space and two people have to hide now! Who, who, um... We're out of time. Look, if it's too cramped, you just get in there. But where will you go? I'll manage. Hurry up now. Not to hide in the cabinet. Yuri stands behind the angle of the entry door, so as to be hidden behind it when it opens. Huh. Oh, this light got turned off already. The custodian looks around briefly. Ah, well. Everything looks fine in here. There we go. The door closes and the custodian's footsteps echo down the hallway. Is he gone yet? Yeah, I think so. Come on, get out of there and let's get going before something else happens. Ha 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 ha!
<laughs> oh my gosh, that was so silly. We were so close to being caught. We totally were. I can't believe you wanted us both to try and jam in that cabinet. We never would have both fit in there. Well, it was the best idea I had at the time. We were under a lot of stress and we weren't thinking clearly. Yeah, it was kind of fun though. Yeah. Well, um, come on, let's go hit up MC's holiday party. Everyone else will be wondering where we are. All right. <laughs> no fair, it was a surprise! How can it be a surprise? I was holding the mistletoe right over you. <laughs> they sure are having fun, huh? Yeah, they are. So how did it go with you and Yuri at the school? You guys do whatever it was you were going to do. Well, both yes and no, really. But overall, I'd say it was a success. Huh. Monica and Natsuki watch as Siri and MC collapse in a fit of giggling. Yeah, they're definitely pretty happy. Wish I could be that happy with someone. And Natsuki, I hope you get to be that happy with someone. You deserve that kind of happiness, you know? Yeah. <coughs> oh god, Sweet, are you feeling alright? Oh, fine. Other than dying of cancer, Mom. You shouldn't say things like that. Do you want to call your sister? No, that's okay. I'm I'm sorry, your father and I, we... I know, it's okay, Mom. Don't beat yourself up, okay? We all make mistakes, it's alright. Are you sure you don't want to call her? I know she always makes you feel better. Yeah, but she's probably having a good time right now. I don't want to ruin it. That's all for now. Be sure to email Monica your questions at that place. And you can also email her there or... Or email her there to request access to the Discord server. There you go. Be sure to check out the credits to TXT file for crediting of all the assets used by the mod. And thanks for watching Club Meetings. See you next week. See you right now. Because we're. Oh, wait. No, not, not load game. We're... Hey, it didn't take us back to the. It didn't take us back to the main menu. That's weird. Uh. It's... No, we haven't. No, wait, but. Why didn't it take us back to this menu? That's weird. That was weird! Why did it do that? That was very peculiar. Episode 22! Miss Ida decides if curiosity is worth it, Monica makes the worst mod ever. <laughs> Natsuki visits Fuyuki. And I'm fairly confident I had it right this time. Yeah, that was that was 20. Okay, so, yeah, let's go! We got like 14 minutes. Well, that's quite a bundle of challenges for you. It sounds like your anger at Monica was very intense. It was. And now, with your friend's sister having cancer, obviously it might feel a little strange for me to ask you about its impact on you, but how do you feel about that? Hmm... It's a little hard to say, actually. It does feel weird to talk about it from my perspective. It seems kind of selfish. Well, if you were talking to her about this, maybe it'd be selfish. But as it turns out, you're talking to your therapist, who is interested in how you feel about it. I guess. But I weirdly don't feel that upset about it myself. I mean, I don't really know her sister. The only matter once or twice. But when I do feel bad, then Natsuki feels bad. I know her sister is important to her. And because you feel like that, what do you think that means? Well, like I said, it feels selfish. It makes me feel like kind of a bad person who is so centered about her feelings. Kind of like what happened with Monica. Who do you mean? Well, like with Monica, I got a list of result pain and anger like we were talking about. Yes, because of that unspecified, really bad thing she did in the past that you don't want to talk about. We really should confront that whenever you're all ready. Yeah, it's not really about me being ready or not. But anyway, yeah, I had all these feelings. And I just kind of like dumped them on her. Like I took something she had already taken responsibility for and worked through. And I made it her problem again. Because I felt bad and hadn't dealt with it yet. And so here are you dumping any feelings on Natsuki? Well, no. But you're worried you're being selfish. Yes. And how would you say that selfishness is manifested with regard to Natsuki? Well, I'm not sure it's, um, it's manifested in any way. Natsuki would know about it. So how are you being selfish? Well, I mean, because I don't share all her sadness. And I just feel kind of normal and okay. And I feel happy, so 
sometimes, even though she's going through a sad thing. That sounds more like you're feeling selfish rather than you're being selfish. Being selfish to me implies that you'd be taking some action that was selfish. But the feeling of selfishness you described, that's pretty normal. Really? Really. And do you know what else is really normal? What? Feeling sympathy instead of empathy for a friend. I, um, I don't understand at all what you mean. Well, empathy is feeling someone else's pain as your own, all going through something very similar to what they are. It's more like feeling bad with someone. Whereas sympathy is more like feeling bad for someone, without necessarily feeling their same negative feelings. So which one should I be doing? Well, there's no right one or wrong one. You need to empathize, to to sympathize in different situations. But the point for the day is that just having sympathy without empathy is perfectly normal. And is, in fact, healthy for all concerned. If you empathize with everyone all the time, you'll get worn out very quickly. So I don't think you have much reason to think of yourself as selfish. Other than that, you will use the thinking of yourself that way. Yeah, I am. And it's okay to be selfish sometimes anyway. Everyone's selfish sometimes. I mean, even with your friend Monica and the way you lashed out at her. She did do something bad to you after all, even if it was a long time ago. So it wasn't like your action was out of nowhere. I guess not. That, that kind of makes sense. It's like... Okay, we saw it sometimes. Of course, we're only human. As long as we keep it in check, it's just part of everyday experience. Well, huh. Thanks, Doc. Another valuable lesson was learned. Well, it's easy when you have such an agreeable patient. Hmm, it's Literature Club Day again. And you think of how I can con convince them to trust me. It feels like maybe they're close to doing so. I just need a plan, something I can do to get them to trust me. They said that they can technically only share it with people enrolled at the school. Hmm. Junko, we do adult school here, right? Yes, we do. Oh wait, that, that, that lady, yeah. Yes, we do. I wonder if I could enroll. I have no idea why you would be interested in that. You already have your high school diploma or you wouldn't be teaching here. I guess I'm just in the mood for personal growth. Well, I'm not sure if we have any adult education programs other than the diploma track. We might have some technical school stuff, who knows? You'd probably have to ask the adult education people. Why the sudden interest in personal growth? Oh, it's just being the literature club advisor has been pretty inspiring. Reminds me of when I used to write when I was young. It kind of made me miss it. Well, you wouldn't exactly get anything like that during technical school. No, but it's nice to just do some kind of personal growth no matter what it is. I suppose that's true. Although it's out of character for you to be so wretchedly sassy. I guess I am usually more settled and content, aren't I? You are. I was advising the Lucha Club going. Any interesting students? I remember that Yuri is in that club. She is. She's a wonderful student. And very kind. Yes. Other than that, we have Monica, Sayori, MC, and Natsuki. And Kenzo was part of the club for a couple weeks, too. Yes, you were telling me about that. His extra credit project. Did that turn out alright? Well, it did result in him getting a chance to redo some essays, and he got the grade of a C+, plus, but it'll be up to his performance on his finals, I suppose. Well, best of luck to him, I suppose. Yup. I'm going to head off now. Speaking of the literature club, I'm with the Dr. Siori before school starts today. Hopefully I can find her coming through the gate. Good luck! Have a good day, MC! Remember what I did! Yeah, yeah, I will. You have a good day too, Bon! Hi, Miss Ida! Hi, Sayori. Good day so far? So far, yes! So I wanted to talk to you about the whole, uh, the whole club thing. Hmm... You should forget about it! What? You should forget about it! We were not kidding about it being something really, really bad! And something that you really would be better off staying away from! Sometimes secrets are better off kept rather than shared, you know? Is that why you lied about it to me when I first asked? Yes! And I'm sorry, but sometimes it has to be done! I lie about all sorts of things. I'm actually a pretty terrible person. Don't say that, Sayori. Listen, I just want to talk to you about it if I or if you can. Sayori glances away towards the school. I need to get to class. But if you really do want to have a talk about it, 
about it, we can do that. Afterward. But again, you shouldn't. You should just let this go. I promise you, no lies this time. That is what would be best for everyone. I don't think I can let it go at this point, Sayori. To be honest with you, I have been overwhelmed with worry about you guys. You don't have to tell me what the big secret is or anything. I just want to talk. Well, alright then. I'll see you after class, I guess. Monica and Natsuki are standing behind a table with cupcakes on it. So remind me, Monica, why am I out here again? Because the student council cut our funding a little. But I'd like to keep doing all the same things that we have been doing. So we need to have a little fundraiser. So hopefully we can sell these cupcakes and make back some cash for the club to use. Yeah, that part I get. That's obvious. What I don't get is... Why am I out here? When it was me who made the cupcakes already. I feel like my contribution to this project has already been made. So I see no reason why I, as opposed to you, should be out here trying to sell these things. Well, obviously it's because you're the superior salesperson. You've got the hot pitches. So I probably could do it on my own, but then we wouldn't sell as many cupcakes because we lack your star power. Hmm. So basically you're just using naked flattery to try to win me over. However, that doesn't make any of what you said untrue. I'll do it. Glad to have you on board. That's right, cupcakes. Vanilla and chocolate cupcakes. Get them while they're not all, or all even remotely hot. That's right, these babies have been out of the oven for hours now at this point. They're kind of getting to the point of really being soft and squishy. But that's when they're best. How much? Noski impatiently taps the sign showing the price. Hey, yeah, that's pretty cheap. I'll take a couple. Sold to the gentleman in the front. Monica, plate this man up some cupcakes on the double, quick. You've got it, Natsuki. Cupcakes! Only the finest handcrafted artisanal cupcakes made by a true baking master. Oh, Natsuki cupcakes, I want some. Damn right you do, right? Excuse me, sir. We have some cupcakes here for sale and... Oh, darn. You're never going to move units that way, Monica. Move units? Yeah, move units. Push product. Close the deal. I see. You've got to give it some pizzazz, some oomph, some showmanship. Monica climbs up on the table with the cupcakes. Or, no, Natsuki does, rather. Come on, come on. Now is the time to partake of cupcakes, people. These prices are ridiculously low. Only a clerical error of astonishing incompetence could have resulted in a cupcake so delicious being so magnificently cheap. Natsuki extremely loud, or yeah, Natsuki's extremely loud yelling has actually attracted a small crowd and a few start buying cupcakes. Cupcakes! Cupcakes! Phew, the break is just about over. We did pretty well. Only a couple of cupcakes left. You want to split them? Sure. I'm surprised you can still talk after all that screaming. Isn't your voice hoarse? Yeah, a little. But that's the price of being a closer. Well, however you did it, you did a great job, Natsuki. We'll be able to get you lots more baking ingredients with this bunny, along with everything else. Natsuki? Are you okay? Natsuki feels like she shakes her head now. Oh, dear. She's, she's feeling things. But unfortunately for Natsuki, we are out of time for this episode. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And we'll catch you next time with more Club Meetings Season 2. Hope to see you then. Bye-bye.